Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Today, we're going to be headspacing a Mosin Nagant 1907 carbine. Now this is probably the rarest gun we've featured on the channel thus far. And if you've seen some of our past videos, you may have seen this before. This one's a little interesting because it's actually in a sporterized French contract Chateau Rostock from around 1894. Now, don't ask me why, um, but it is. So that's what we kind of have to work with here. Now, the bolt doesn't match, and it's got a little bit of headspace trouble. Um, it, I have shot this. It's, it's safe to shoot. But what happens is it mostly closes on what we have here is a no-go gauge. We can see here um, it says 1.778. And then here we have a field gauge, which says 1.905. Now, if you're wondering where these came from, these are actually original Russian uh, armorer's Mosin gauges. Came actually from the Ukraine. So the idea here is that you want to be able to chamber around, but you want to be able to not cl close the bolt fully with either of these gauges, ultimately. Now... In our current scenario, it will pretty much almost fully close on our no-go gauge here. But it definitely will not close on our field gauge. So it is technically safe to shoot. I have shot it, but it's a little bit out of spec if it closes on a no-go gauge. If it closes on a field gauge, it is not safe to shoot. Do not ever attempt to do that. It's very dangerous and very scary. So what we're going to do now is take a look at some of our bolt heads here and see if we can find one that works. Now what's handy is um, it's a little bit frustrating to get these around the extractor, but none of these bolt heads have an extractor currently. So this is really going to help us figure out um, headspace easily. So what I'm going to do is open the bolt, pull it out. All right, so now I'm going to disassemble this by decocking it. And we're gonna pull this bolt off here. We're gonna set this one to the side. And now we're just gonna start taking some of these bolt heads. And what we're gonna do is just try some on here and see if they had space right. First, I'm gonna take some of the nicer, cleaner ones here. Some of these are a little dirty. I'm gonna recock it. We're gonna place it back in the rifle. All right, and we can see that goes in the battery just fine. So let's take our no-go gauge and see if it closes. See, it takes some force, but that's not bad. That's better than what we had before, for sure. And you can see it's really hard to reopen it here. There we go. So this potentially may be a winner for us, uh, which is great because this was the very first one we tried, and we have over 40 to try. So hopefully we're, hopefully we're not going to have to do that. So this one's going to be uh, potentially a winner. So I'm going to take this guy, set him to the side as potential winner category. Let's find us another one to try. Uh, maybe this one. <laughs> Looks like someone left some parts of Dorito chips in there, so I'll try to find a different one. You can see here that this closes just fine on the no-go gauge, so that's not good. Uh, there's, there's literally no resistance here at all. So what we're going to do is keep looking.
And Mosins are kind of like used cars. Everyone's got its own quirks. And this particular one has, has quite a lot of quirks, maybe of like an Italian sports car. This is one of the quirkiest Mosins I've ever dealt with, which is sort of ironic. So far, this guy has been our winner so far. Okay, let's find us another Sistrayetsk bolt head. We'll try this one. Make sure this rotates good. Oh yeah, nice and nice and free there. You can see it's better than the last one, but it's still a little, a little too much for my liking. So this is sort of counterintuitive. If it doesn't go into battery, that's good. All right, so this does go into battery mostly, so that's not quite what we're looking for. About like what we have now, actually, with the bolt we started with today. Here's another Sistrayetsk. We'll give this guy a go. All right, that closes perfectly, so that's not what we want. And sometimes I get confused, especially if I forget that the no-go gauge is still in there. Okay. And that seems like it might work. This is a post-28 Tula bolt head. Yeah, see, yeah, that, it's better and it's very tight, very tight. So it's an improvement. I don't think it's still quite as good as this one was though. It really helps to have a lot of these on hand, as you can see, because you just don't know what you're going to get. It could be good or <laughs> not so good. All right, here's another one. Go ahead and try this one. Yeah, kind of the same deal there. Not quite the fit I'm looking for, but also not the worst thing in the world. Takes a little bit of coaxing. The trigger, I, don't, I almost should have just taken the trigger out of this because the trigger really, it's sporterized and it kind of hangs up on the inside of the stock. It's not really the greatest setup in the world. But remember I said this gun has quirks. I was not lying. All right. Here's a wartime Ijevsk. Now I like these because the tolerances on these can really vary. So with the wartime Ijevsk, well, I guess, it, excuse me. We don't necessarily know if this is wartime. It's post-28. But if you look at statistically the numbers... Of production numbers statistically this is this is, has a very good chance of being a wartime one because that's when they made the majority of them all right yeah kind of a tight fit but not tight enough all right, keep looking. We will find one that works good. All right. Nah, let's try a different one. 
some of them won't even fit. I mean, if it doesn't even fit on the bolt body itself, we're not even going to bother trying, right? Just keep looking. Ooh, folks, we have a winner. Look at that. That's what you want to see. And I'm not able to close it any more than this. This is exactly what we're looking for here. See, I can't close this anymore. And again, we're on the no-go gauge here. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, you see how many bolt heads it took to find one that fits perfectly? That's why this can be a really frustrating thing and why it's really handy to have like a million bolt heads on hand because as you can see, each one fit really differently. This is one of the interesting things, and it's a double-edged sword about Mosin's. It can be frustrating to find one that fits well, but at the same time, it's sort of cool because no two Mosin's and no two Mosin parts are exactly identical. Everyone has its own unique identity. So I'm liking this, guys. This is cool. All right, so maybe now we'll have to test fire this in another video. But I'm glad we are able to find one that fits like we want it to. And let me take this back out, see if I can actually tell uh, who made this bolt, because I don't quite remember. I really should remove that trigger. Uh, Maybe y'all remember this particular bolt if you watched our last video. This might have been one of our unknowns. Which is great because, um, and you know, you might look at that and say, well, I don't know, I, there's no maker's marks on it, who cares? Well, if it's the only bolt in the world that'll headspace right in this 1907 carbide, then it's pretty cool. So it just goes to show that don't ignore a bolt or a Mosin part, even if it uh, doesn't have any visible manufacturer's markings on it. All right, so hopefully y'all enjoyed this video, and hopefully you didn't find it too boring. Um, these are kind of hard to find, although there's a wide variety of headspace gauges. You don't have to have this particular one, but you do want to have a no-go and a field gauge. It's good to have both. Um, you can get a go gauge. Go gauges are nice to have, but, um, I don't usually use one because if it won't close on a no-go gauge, but it will chamber around, then you're fine. Um, there's really nothing else to worry about. So the no-go gauge and the field gauges. Now, some people only care about the field gauges. And like I said, from a gunsmith's perspective, generally, it's okay it's it's considered safe for, just from a headspace perspective if it closes on a no-go gauge but does not close on a field gauge it's just you might just have some case stretching or things like that but remember if it closes on a field gauge fully it's not safe to shoot so thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the video and let me know if y'all have any prayer requests and I'll see you next time.